yes, we asked for, you, we don't have a picture of those three men who were hung. We have the one of them lynched, but they're already really beat up and, and um, we didn't have, know any way to do a depiction of them. So we asked for three African American men about 20 years of age or so to who would uh, stand in and, and, and Carla would use them as her models. And so those are models of three young men uh, who were living in Duluth six years ago, five years ago maybe. Um, we were hoping to get one of them to come in and speak with you, to you, but he's a student down at the main U and um, doesn't work to get him here right now. Uh, Eddie Glenn is his name. Um, so we, we, anyway, so we started fundraising and um, it turns out that the city wasn't going to pay for the whole thing. And we had these fantasies, well, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll write to uh, Whoopi Goldberg, we'll write to number of, uh, Tiger Woods, a bunch of, of uh, people like that who had money, and maybe they would buy into this and send us. That didn't work very well either. Um, <laughs> so our dreams of, you know, somebody would write a big check, and this is going to be okay. It wasn't working, and we really, the committee, the Clayton Jackson McGee committee had to sort of stop the other endeavors, because we had plans to do other things. We just really had to drop them for about two years and just work on getting the memorial built. And that meant raising money and doing the actual work. Now, I stayed for the most part with the, the actual work. I met weekly with Carla um, to talk about, okay, so what's our plan here for the next, you know, we laid out a construction plan. When, and when that helped me was when I'd have to have some money to pay for these things. And she and, and Anthony both agreed they'd be paid last, which was wonderful. Uh, and they, boy, they didn't make a lot of money on this. I, I think we might have paid them $10,000 together. I don't think it was each. It was, if it was, even if it was each, they didn't make much money. Um, we ended up going four months over our deadline and not due to anything that they were doing. Problems with with uh, site preparation, problems with getting the land turned over to us from Lamar Advertising, just some legal snafus that, you know, some city attorney had to sign off, and then some attorney at Lamar in Michigan had to sign off and stuff like that. It took weeks, so we were behind. Um, did not do. We were hoping to do it in June of 2003, and we ended up doing it in October <laughs> of uh, 2003. We had uh, weekends there in the fall, that last, where we tried to organize uh, church groups or whatever to come in and help lay bricks. We had thousands of bricks to lay. Um, and we did that in a couple weekends. Um, and get the sand in and all that kind of stuff. The walls, um, fundraising really took off once the walls went up. And people could, could see something happening down there. Uh, it was so much easier. You know, we, one newsletter we sent out to people said, there's a miracle happening on the corner of second and, and second there, or first. And so have you been by to see it? And just encouraging people to go there and see how different this looked from that dirty, junky parking lot to now this, this nice, rather nice looking thing happening. Um, and so we ended up uh, um, getting the whole thing paid for. Uh, by the time, I think we had it all the money raised by the dedication of 2003, right? It just came in. Um, do you remember the, the, the band that sent us uh, the, like, $3,000? R.E.M. Yeah. First guitarist. The, okay, yeah, there was a guitarist for R.E.M. who heard about it somehow. Um, and and um, I think one of our committee members knew him and sent him the book, and uh, Michael Fito's book. And he read it and sent us back three or five thousand dollars just to, to go towards it stuff like that was happening um, we had a, a woman hear about it whose father was one of the jailers um, did Heidi talk about that okay well I right, I she sent us money it was it was it was a relief to her she so wanted to be behind this and she knew her her father would have wanted it and so she sent us money. So we had, just that, that stuff came in. It was, it was just amazing. Um, one of our unfinished bits of business is 
getting a plaque up there on the wall, the lower wall on 2nd Avenue East that will list and recognize the people who gave at least $3,000. We promised them that when, when they gave us the money. And uh, it's one of those things we haven't quite finished yet. Okay. Well, that in a very short uh, time is what happened over a couple of year period. Um, I continued to be on the board and to, um, as a, I mean, the memorial site just has a special place in my heart. And so I'm, the, I'm still the uh, main contact for the board and the city, because the city owns the memorial. Um, we turned it over to them. They're responsible for the upkeep and, and stuff like that. And I'm, but like when the snow builds up or whatever's happening down there, I, I try to be the one who's making the contact with uh, Tom Casper, the city's chief gardener, who sort of keeps it, keeps it together. And when we reworked our gardens last spring, because they really weren't very nice, um, a woman came in and named Julia Cheng and contacted us and said, I'd be happy to work on that with you guys. <laughs> And uh, so then I, I got to work with her on, on that kind of stuff. So um, it was a very important uh, thing in my life, obviously, and took up hours, <laughs> hours of my life for those over the, over these years. Um, it's better now, um, and I, I, pr I probably go bi-weekly just to look, make sure it's all there. We, when we put it up, we worried all, I'll, I'll close with, we worried all about vandalism. We talked about putting a camera up on top of the building across the street. And so they would just run, you know, 24 seven and we'd be able to see if anybody did anything. We had the walls coated with anti-graffiti material. And um, the person who put it on said, I'll come back twice and repair things. You know, as part of the cost of putting this on. We haven't had to ask them to come back once. We've had oh, pop thrown on the walls and at the statues and stuff, but very, uh, it's so minimal, um, I'd have to almost say we've had no vandalism. And people are pretty good about picking up. Um, you mean, when, if you go by there, you don't see a lot of junk blown in the corners and stuff like that. And we'll hear of, like there were people who lived, who lived in the Gardner Hotel, which is the hotel right down from the memorial on second there who would a couple of guys we didn't know were going out and picking things up just because they liked it <laughs> um, we worried all about the, the cozy bar patrons being drunk at night and coming out at one o'clock in the morning and all kinds of bad racial things happening kind of stuff you know or whatever drunken people can so easily do and we just have had so little of it um, that we're very pleased about it um, I'm glad it's where it is because that's where the lynching took place. And it just seems like a really appropriate place to have it. Uh, and I think I'll stop there. So. Thank you.